morning everybody. Uh, today we're gonna talk about I mean, Nations League play is starting today again. And we're gonna talk now about League C and a little bit about League D. I gave you a big League D video right after the last in October, last round of play. But we're gonna look at that a little bit too. But um, let's start off League C. Um, just Let's see how far I will get. I know I have to stop to go to the post office uh, at one point, but last time when I was reaching the post office, I was already done yesterday. I mean, okay, League C. Uh, the first group is probably the most interesting group of almost all of them. Uh, probably, because if I look at it closer, uh, one decision is almost done. It is, of course, the one with Israel sitting six points on top plus two goals, then Scotland plus one goal and with three points and Albania minus three uh, with three points and the next uh, Scotland has two games left to play against each of the opponents and basically hold all the cards in their hands. If they win both games, uh, they will win this group. Uh, however, in this group so far, the home team has won all their games and it kind of seems like the one team that will be able to break surf, if we use a tennis te terminology, uh, will probably go through, but you know, we'll see. First game is Albania Scotland, and if Albania wants to avoid relegation, they definitely will need the win, and even then, it's already tricky um, because you need. To have the win but you have minus three and Israel has plus two so your best bet is that you are level on points with Scotland uh, or hoping that Israel gets a result against Scotland so um, let's say Albania uh, wins the one uh, they have lost a direct uh, comparison with Israel already so uh, Israel winning 2-0 at home losing and Albania winning 1-0 uh, at home against Israel. So if Albania wins, um, they would be level on points with Israel, but they are definitely behind Israel. Uh, so that probably, not surely, but probably could help them avoid relegation, gives them a chance to avoid relegation. Um, they definitely have the uh, weakest cards. If they really want to um, make a serious dent at not only avoiding relegation but also in the same, uh, at the same time be promoted, they need a win by three goals against Scotland, which seems a little bit uh, far out to talk to us. A win with two goals would put them level with Scotland as long as they don't give a goal up. So, you know, they lost a 2-0 to Scotland in Glasgow, I assume. So, yeah, Albania is in a tricky spot for them. It's almost seems to me it's hard to avoid relegation. Their easiest path would be with help. I think they cannot really do it for, uh, by their own making. Unless they really win 3-0 against Scotland, uh, then they would have won the direct duel against Scotland and then Scotland needs to pull out something against Israel. It's still, they need help. Uh, it's, it's tricky. It's definitely tricky. So, um, as I said, if, it did, if they win 2-0 against Scotland, then it's down to goal differential and it will not do because they will still be at minus one. And then you basically need that Israel is beating Scotland. Uh, or getting a result against Scotland, because if Scotland wins, uh, Scotland is through. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, draw in this game, uh, the biggest profiter would definitely be Israel. Uh, Israel looks quite good in this group. Um, a win for Scotland would probably be the best uh, news for, uh, for Scotland there because then also uh, just a win would see them through. So um, Israel basically needs a draw in Scotland 
and they make it. Yeah, it's that simple. Um, uh, there are more. We'll see easy ease through so this is quite a comfortable pos uh, position to be in. Uh, it gets really complicated if every team wins at home because in that case then you uh, need to look goal differential where Israel at the moment holds a slight advantage over Scotland. However, if Scotland now wins twice that probably would... Uh, no, Scotland wins twice they are through in anyway, but um, Scotland loses then they are at zero then Scotland would need to win uh, by two goals. Uh, no, they only only need to win. Oh, this is complicated. No, the <laughs> they go there with the lead because then it's against everyone, against everyone, it's not a goal for French. Yeah, they would win. They need, need, need to win by two goals. Very interesting group um, prediction. I, I think Albania will be last. Um, just because the way it goes. Now, will it be Israel or Scotland? Um, that's a toss up to me, honestly. I wanna say, I think Israel can pull the upset. Uh, they have some momentum going on, although they have to play in Scotland. Nah, I'll say Scotland, Israel, Albania. Let's put it that way. Uh, the next group is almost decided and yeah, the climate is playing a Finland card. So we have Finland sitting on top with um, 12 points. Behind that we have uh, Greece with 6, Hungary with 4, Estonia with 1. Uh, and because of climate, uh, Estonia and Finland have already played all their home games. And I think this is a huge advantage uh, for them now. Uh, this also means that this was the reason for this weird scheduling, uh, that they didn't play it straight. Because Finland and Estonia came and played in November at home. Uh, same goes for almost all other Nordic countries or Northern countries. Uh, probably with the exception Denmark is the one that where it doesn't work, but everything that's, doesn't play. At home, so you know, uh, the scheduling for UEFA is not easy. Although, I really would like to see that. I don't know Finland, but I can imagine it's still playable there. I think Sweden has a home game against Russia, so if Sweden can play at home, uh, why couldn't Finland play at home? Just wondering out loud. Um, it's maybe a tad cold in Finland, a third away from the Gulf Stream. Any point that Finland makes in the next two games, and those are games against first Greece and then Hungary, uh, means that they are through. It's as simple as that. Um, Greece is the only team that can beat Finland and they need a minor miracle, I would say. Uh, they lost 2-0 to Finland, so uh, first up it will be you need to beat Finland by three goals or at least be uh, to zero uh, to level up the score. Uh, ideally you want to win by three goals, which given how Finland has been playing is already a tough ask. And then um, you need to win at home against Estonia, which is more doable. Um, if you win 2 nil against Finland, then you probably need goals and you need to hope that Hungary does something beats Finland. So, you know, it is a um, pretty tough proposition. Um, I think the way that the group is now is also the way it will end. I think it will Finland go through, then Greece, then Hungary, then Estonia will be relegated. Um, although Estonia, they have the chance if they win against Hungary, then they have the tiebreak against Hungary. But they will only be level of points, 4-4, four, four, and then uh, yeah, they still have to play in Greece and Hungary uh, could have could make it a point or something like that. So, you know, um, relegation spot is not quite uh, decided yet, the promotion spot uh, is decided. And uh, theoretically, Greece uh, could also be relegated still. Uh, Estonia is five points behind Greece, but I honestly think that Greece uh, 
will not get relegated. I think it's more likely that they get relegated than that they get promotion, although realistically, but both are highly unlikely results. I really think this group will end like that. Uh, as it stands now. And Finland getting promoted, uh, I think is a huge result for Finland. Uh, gotta be honest with that. Um, them in League B, it's a big achievement because I thought that this is a group that will be between Greece and Hungary. Uh, I thought that Finland can uh, get something against one of those opponents, but I didn't think that they will um, dominate the group the way they did it. So, big. Big on Finland, I gotta say. And then uh, we have the third group which is Norway and Bulgaria at three points each, uh, nine points each. Then we have Cyprus with four points, and Slovenia with one point. Um, same deal here, Norway has two away games now. Uh, and it's an interesting group. Norway has uh, the two games between the top teams both ended with one nil home win, so they are even. So it, it's between them, if they should finish level of points, it's down to goal differential. Then Norway holds the advantage. Norway, I think, has now a plus three, and Bulgaria has a plus two. I think it's four one and five three, something like that. Uh, Bulgaria first travels to Cyprus, and they already had a hard time beating Cyprus at home. And I think even, even the last qualifier. Cyprus got a draw in Sofia, so that's not an easy game and I rather think that Norway gets a result in uh, Slovenia than the other way around, although Slovenia, um, that's more or less a last chance game, they lose the tiebreaker to Cyprus, so they need to win um, and hope that Cyprus doesn't make uh, many more points. Uh, but the way, I think Bulgaria was lucky, I hate to say it, you know, I was Bulgarian, uh, I would love to see Bulgaria get promoted, absolutely would love to see Bulgaria get promoted. Um, I just think that the game in Cyprus is a trap game for Bulgaria and while they really played well in um, Slovenia, I think they had a very lucky win at home against Norway. And also, they turned around the game against Cyprus, but it was not a super convincing win. And I really didn't like what I saw of them in Norway. I absolutely have to say this was a, a very disappointing performance. I would have loved to see uh, a bit more from them, because I think they have it in them. Uh, Norway really played great against Bulgaria at home. And should have gotten more, I think. Uh, Norway, from all of all I could tell, is the better of the two sides, and that's why I, as much as it hurts me to say, I think Norway will get promotion in that group. Bulgaria will finish second because I think they will get the necessary point. They cannot get relegated in, 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 anymore, and they will get the necessary points. I th probably think they will get a draw in Cyprus, and probably even a draw against Slovenia. Just see the sun behind the clouds, it's a beautiful sight. Uh, we are in the fog. Uh, the city is in the fog where I'm living at home. Uh, it's still the sun. So that's how I think that group will go. I am not sure if uh, Cyprus or Slovenia. Uh, Cyprus holds the better card, so I think Cyprus will probably make it. And Slovenia being relegated, uh, that's a shame, honestly. Because I, uh, Slovenia, if I'm if I'm not totally wrong, Slovenia was a top seed in the in the in that group and should have was expected to do more. There is something serious wrong. Slovenian uh, League D doesn't sound quite right to me, honestly. But hey, I don't know too many inside details, to, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I think that group will also end the way it stands now. And then we have the last group where Serbia has 8, Montenegro 7 and Romania 6 points and Lithuania sits at 0. Uh, so Lithuania is already relegated. Serbia has 2 home games now against um, Montenegro, which probably uh, which uh, win will seal the deal for them. And then against Lithuania, where also a win will seal the deal for them, I think. 
Yeah, probably not. If they lose at home to Montenegro and then a Montenegro need to play against Romania, yeah, okay, it's not. I still think that from all that I've, I've seen, Serbia is unlucky to have as, as little points as they have. Uh, they should have gotten the win in Romania. Romania put up a great defensive performance, but they were the better team there. Um, they probably. The two draws were unlucky draws for Serbia. Serbia seems to be the strongest team. I think they will get the result uh, against Montenegro already, and then it's through. Of course, Montenegro, um, if they draw, then Serbia just needs a win. Just a win against Lithuania, which seems very uh, likely. So, that's the way it will go. I think it is more in the, in the interest whether Romania or Montenegro will get second. And they have a direct uh, duel for that. I think Montenegro uh, pull out a draw in Romania, so yeah. I'm gonna say that it will be Serbia, Montenegro, Romania, Lithuania finishing last. That's, uh, that's how I think it will finish, although uh, Romania is not a bad team per se. But Montenegro also, I think they are, it, it's a pesky team. A lot. I think at home Montenegro can win against Romania. That's what Am I? But it's it's close between those two. But I think Serbia is uh, heads and shoulders above all of the other teams. And to be honest, should have the group sewn sewn up already. So I would say Serbia will get the win against Montenegro. And even if they don't, uh, they will get at least a draw, and then they will get the win. Which leads us to League D, and I'm only gonna talk about promotion, I'm not gonna go in all the greedy details there. Um, the first group is already decided, we have Georgia, and it's basically Kazakhstan probably get a second uh, spot out of there. It's not all decided yet, but I think that's the way it will go. We have a huge matchup between Luxembourg and Belarus. Uh, that will pro could or will probably decide who is going to get the promotion there. At the moment, we have Luxembourg uh, one point ahead of Belarus. Uh, Luxembourg has won every game except losing to Belarus at home, uh, away from home. So uh, they have the superior goal differential. Um, I think that's the one that will decide and I think Luxembourg will see this through. Uh, they are up and coming. I think Belarus is a decent team that no, that no one really wants to play for, but I think Luxembourg is an up and coming team that uh, can well make some noise. Uh, the other the next group um, is I think Kosovo or Azerbaijan will make it and Kosovo has the home game the last game. Is a home game against Azerbaijan. Now they have to play against Malta. Um, I really don't see it going. I, re I really think this will go Kosovo's way. Uh, so that takes care of that. And then the last one um, I think the nation that cannot be named Firearm, Northern Macedonia, Macedonia, however you want to call them. I really don't want to get into that naming dispute. Uh, it has also the best cards to make out of that group. Uh, so, among those four nations, note one will be at the Euros uh, in 2020 because they will uh, play out a spot. Um, if you ask me, probably Georgia is the strongest team out of the four of them. Now, I heard a podcast uh, the other day, uh, German podcast. I will reference it here, where they were kind of making fun of the fact, yeah, one of those four will make it to the Euros. Um, and they're making fun of Luxembourg against Belarus a little bit. I honestly think this is a good idea to give one smaller nation a spot. Um, and it's not an original UEFA idea, it's the Asian Cup always had this Challenger Cup where 
nation, uh, a nation like India made it, uh, who would have no chance otherwise to qualify. But the smaller nations get a spot at the Asian Cup. And, you know, the Asian Cup will happen in January. And I honestly have to tell you, uh, I saw it, they are also playing now with 24 teams. Which for the Asian Cup, that's the one tournament where they don't need it. Because this is a confederation that is way too spread out um, in terms of... Um, you know, there's a huge drop off after the big nations. And the big nations we know are also not that big, uh, considering the World Cup. Um, so I am a little bit hesitant. I probably won't watch much of the Asian Cup. I, the one that was happening in 2015 was honestly one of the more boring tournaments that yet you will ever have. Um, for the simple reason there was no single draw. I think in the knockout stage there were a few exciting results. I think Iran, Iraq was a great game. Um, and then, you know, going to the final. Um, Australia against Korea, we who already played at the group stage. So there was a little bit of ex excitement, but uh, it was all clear cut in the groups. Uh, the most teams were already qualified before the last game because everyone took care of their business. There were absolutely no real upsets uh, until the knockout stage. When I compare it to the F uh, Africa Cup of Nations at the same time, which probably was not better in terms of uh, level of competition, but the, the Africa Cup of Nations is one of the most level competitions out there. And they also moved now to 24 teams. And so we have Madagascar in there. But yeah, this idea gives the smaller nations a spot at the Euros, uh, makes A, the Nations League a little bit more interesting, and I really think gives the smaller nations a bit more uh, drive moving forward and also some experience that they would otherwise not get. And you know, the most what you really would like to have is that there is not a big drop off uh, within your confederation. You want to have everyone, you know, you want to have uh, many competitive games, let's put it that way. Of course, in Europe, it's not that easy because you have micro nations in there that will never uh, pull the weight, although they can be pesky and they can be a decider. And I'm very happy to have the Nations League D to give those smaller nations level competition and raise their level, actually. And we saw it with Iceland, who everyone will say is a, level, is a League D nation. No, they're in League A. Because they got, the, I don't want to say they got their shit together, but you know, with good planning, good coaching, and everything behind them, they made it really, really, really far. And were everybody starting in 2016 and even at the World Cup, uh, they did have a chance of progress. Uh, no doubt about it. Well, let me know how you think how you think things will go in leagues C and D. Uh, I gave you my take of how I think things will go. Um, this was not to my personal preference. This was really uh, my objective, uh, trying to be objective in assessing these groups. Uh, what do you think about leagues C and D in general? I am I have no. I, I have actually watched a little bit of uh, League D. I am a big proponent of League D. I think League D is the one and only reason to me that this Nations League exists. Because uh, most nations in League C already uh, would be. You could see any one of those or most of those at a World Cup, or they have some history behind them. But League D, no, they don't. But uh, for those nations. It was made that they get level competition and get competitive fixtures. And if UEFA subsidizes their travel costs, because that's unfortunately a substantial thing, you know, going out to Kazakhstan or Azerbaijan uh, from Andorra, that's a big trip. Anyway, let me know what you think about these. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. Unfortunately, I couldn't make a jersey review video last night and I probably won't do before Saturday. I just don't see the time because I really would like to watch games. So, um, not sure how it will go. And yesterday I just couldn't. Uh,
It was. I was just too tired. I'm fearing the same thing tonight. I'm not even sure if I will be able to watch the games tonight. To be honest, uh, yeah, remains to be seen. Again, like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.